Hello everyone, Jabman025 here. Today I'm taking a look at my 58th Master Grade, the RX-78-5 Gundam, also known as the G5 Gundam. This is from a Gundam side story manga called Space to the End of Flash, also known as Gundam Thoroughbred. Now for those of you who have been watching my reviews, you know that I've already done a G4 Gundam and I did a custom color scheme on that kit. And I did one for this as well, so it'd be a matching set. I am going to be repeating some of the same information from the G4 Gundam in this review. I do apologize for those of you who have already seen it, and this is going to be repeating information, but I just want to make sure people seeing this for the first time get all the info. Now, we're going to start off with the, the body of the kit, some of the inner frame, the bottom of the feet. I changed from gray to glossy aluminum from Tamiya Paints, just to give a more metal and metallic effect. The yellow parts became gold. The way I did that was Tamiya Silver Leaf as a base coat, followed up by Clear Yellow. For the red parts, this is the original red color, kind of a cherry red, actually not that bad of a co color. But I changed that in matching to the G4 as well, to a ruby red candy coating. The way I did that is... Silver Leaf is the base coat, followed up by Clear Red. And here you see the final product. I do like the way the red looks, but I am going to say this. If anyone wants to try this technique, I would advise not starting with red. Uh, of all the clear paints I've used, red is definitely the most complicated and most difficult to use. You have to do lots of coating. It's very messy. Your fingers get covered in red paint. People think you're bleeding. <laughs> so if you're going to start out using a clear color for a paint job, don't start with red. In terms of posability, you get a okay bend out of the elbow and the knee. Nothing great. The ankles and the shoulders, however, are really nice. You get a really nice balance and posability of the ankles. The only real complaint I have about posability is the feet are one solid block, and there'd be a whole lot more poses you could pull off if it were, this was a two-part foot. But accessories, you get two stabilizers or tanks on the back of the kit. Extra shoulder armor for each side. The way you attach it is you open these two latches on the shoulder and slide the armor right in, and then close the latches on top of it. You also get this shield, which is heavily candy coated. Didn't really turn out that great this time on the shield. Just doing so many coats, but a simple peg plugs right into the arm, no problems there. Beam sabers, two pink, nothing fancy. I do like the way the red chrome or red candy coating looks against the red beam saber. That's a nice effect. Beam rifle came gray, I painted it metallic black. But the primary weapon for this is a huge Gatling gun. You get two red parts for the Gatling gun. A little rubber section for the machine belt. Pieces for the belt. Uh, the gun itself is in a plain gray. And some white parts for the handle and the tank on the back. Now I heavily recolored this one. And as you can see, I've pretty much recolored the entire gun on this one. There is no semblance of white anymore. And this is completely different from what you're going to get in the straight build. For most of the gun itself, I use metallic black. For the gun belt, I use gun metal. And my original plan was to use it for the barrels of the gun itself, but as you can see, Gunmetal and black are pretty similar as is, so I changed my mind, went with bolt gun metal from Games Workshop for the barrels. Because as you can see, there's not a whole lot of difference between the gunmetal and the black in Tamiya. But you get a more silver rustic color with the bolt gun metal from Games Workshop. And I went and changed the tank to a candy coating red, just thought it'd be a good idea. It's originally white. And you can hook the whole system 
onto the back of the Gundam. It's a little tricky to hook in the first time, but once it's in, it's in. No problems falling out. As for holding the gun, you pretty much have to do two hands. You're not going to be using the shield or anything else with this gun. I figured as much because when on the gun itself it has two handles, so you're pretty much going to have to use both hands to hold it up. You're not going to get much higher than that, but it does hold it off the ground, and it looks rather nice. In terms of decals, you get a whole bunch of different options to play with. There's decals at the top of the chest area, the shoulders, the shield, and pretty much the nice thing about these decals is they give you a lot of options. You can put this decal here, or this one, or this one. You can see the decal sheet. I haven't used close to half of what they give you because they give you so many different options to play with. And there you see the G4 and G5 Gundam side by side. I kind of like the symmetry of the G4 and G5 next to the the stray blue frame and red frame. Final thoughts on this kit. I'm giving this kit a thumbs up. You can usually find either the G4 or the G5 around $35, $40 with shipping. That's a pretty good price for a Master Grade. This is an above average kit, but not much more. Posability is okay, nothing great. Looks nice, and it's a fun build. So for the money, it's a good kit. Thumbs up. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. Hope you found it informative. Uh, please stay tuned for more. We've got more reviews coming. Please leave a comment. I love reading them. Uh, let me know what you think of my custom color job on this kit. And I will see you guys next time with another review. Oh, and one more thing. Yeah. Yeah, I like this gun. Ahem. <clears throat> um... You've only got one Gatling gun? I have four. Show off. <laughs>